Hello again, it's good to be back with you. Uh, today I'd like to talk about thermodynamics. I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Those questions come from different places and they take different forms, but they pretty much all boil down to that. All right? So, thermodynamics is the study of heat and temperature and how those relate to work and energy. All right. That's not going to help, is it? No, that's garbage. Well, it's true, but it isn't helpful. I know what to do. I know what to do. Here's what we're going to do. All right, we all know what an engine is, right? This is my car. This is a little Kia Soul that I drive around. I like it a lot. It is a 2011. It has an inline four-cylinder engine with 16 valves, and I think it's got cam phasing. It's got a uh, six-speed transmission, I don't know, some other stuff. But that's an engine, right? Here. If you want to see what an engine looks like, here's what my engine looks like. There you go. All right, it's kind of hard to tell. I obviously don't clean it very much. But right there, that's where the air goes, and that's the air filter right there. So see those? That's the intake manifold. That's where the air goes in. Some explody stuff happens in there, and the exhaust goes out. If you look... There's a radiator in there. Some of the heat gets thrown away, okay, because if we don't do that, the engine gets too hot and it melts. And there's a transmission down here somewhere. I don't know, if you look way down there, there's the transmission, okay? So that's an engine. This is what they look like. We all know this is what engines look like, right? Okay, so that was an engine. Okay, I understand that. Cylinders, pistons, valves, crankshafts, got it. All right, that's great. Why is it that about a thousand years ago when I took thermodynamics, all of a sudden that's an engine? In fact, it's not even really an engine. It's a Carnot heat engine, whatever that is. I'm old enough, I think Carnot may have taught the class I took. Um, well, that's still an engine. It's another way of looking at one. Why would you, you know, what does this actually mean? Well, heat goes in and some heat comes out and the difference comes off as work. Mm, okay, I'm listening. Heat goes in. That's the explosion of the fuel in the air inside the cylinder. Some of that energy comes off as work, which is what makes my little car go, and some of it comes off as waste heat which goes out the exhaust pipe and if you look uh, underneath a car the exhaust pipe gets really hot the catalytic converter gets really hot there's a lot of energy that goes down the exhaust pipe as much as a third of the ener the chemical energy that's in the fuel so explosion heat going in piston heat going out work that's what that means well why look at it that way? Because the problem with thermodynamics for a lot of students is that it's abstract. It takes hard mechanical things that we think we know about and it turns it into that. Well, why do I want to think of it that way? The reason I want to think of an engine this way is because it lets me generalize. Mathematics is all about generalizing. Thermodynamics is all about generalizing. Think about mathematics. Archaeologists have found fire pits that have bones in them, animal bones, with notches cut in them. And these are many, many thousands of years old, tens of thousands of years old. Well, somebody was counting something. You know, how many lions did I see today? How many berries did I pick today? Something, who knows? You know, how many children have I got? Um, they're counting something. And so a system of logic that started out just counting things has now been evolved to the point and generalized to the point that I can do things like add numbers that don't necessarily have any physical significance until I assign them some. In the extreme, I can do things like push numbers around and tell you what's going on inside a running engine. That's generalization. It lets you work with ideas in general that you, rather than having to take every uh, specific case is being different. Here's another engine. This is a real engine. It's a little baby one. It's a steam engine. And there's a little tray here. You put the fuel in there. And if you put the water in there, okay, and you heat it up, it runs. Okay, it should probably run on one of these videos. This is an engine. 
just like the one in my car is. Well, without generalization, this is a completely different engine than the one in my car. You have to treat them as completely different entities and analyze them differently. With thermodynamics, you don't have to do that. An engine's an engine. Okay? That's the power. That's why you want to think in terms of thermodynamics. But it comes at a price. The price is abstraction. With abstraction, you now have to go, oh yeah, that's an engine. Okay? So just, just before I sign off here, let's do a quick experiment on transferring heat into a system. Okay? So here you go. Okay, so here's a little experiment we can do. I got two pieces of ice right here. And you see they're kind of starting to melt because it's warm out here today. And I've got this little baby torch. All I'm going to do is melt these with this if I can get this lit. I've been having trouble. There. Can't really see the flame because it's blue. But if you watch that, okay, the fuel's not feeding very well, but you can kind of see what's going on. And you can see, oh, that's hot. There we go. There we go. So I've got this butane flame melting the ice, right? Well, to make the ice, I had to take some water and take the heat out of it. Well, I'm putting the heat back in. Heat is energy. Okay? It takes heat to melt ice and turn it back into water. Well, that's what's inside this torch. See right there? You can see it's uh, feeding there. There you go. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the chemical energy out of the fuel, turning it into fire, making heat, which is energy, and I'm melting that ice. Okay, putting heat back into it and melting it. That's what's going on. All right. Not too surprising. Let's see, I put it right here. I put it right there. Not too surprising that you should be able to melt ice with a torch. There you go. Okay, so with my little torch, I melted an ice cube. Meh. Okay, but what I did is I took a system consisting of an ice cube and a little torch, and I transferred heat from one to the other, okay, through a combustion process. There was chemical energy in the torch, the torch turned into heat coming out of the torch, heated the ice cube, melted the ice cube, changed its state. That's thermodynamics, okay? And when we start to think in terms of diagrams like this and allow some abstraction, very, very powerful ideas emerge. That's thermodynamics. I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you next time.